the Fat Man on ProAudioCoalition.com. My blog is called Shortcuts and Big Pictures, or maybe it's Big Pictures and Shortcuts, I can't remember. And this is part two of my tutorial for the Korg IMS-20 synthesizer emulator, how virtual can you get, on the iPad. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to cover synthesis. You're going to learn about oscillators. You're going to learn about the, how the waveform of the oscillator affects the tone and how to change the octave on your oscillator in this IMS-20. Um, and you're going to learn about filters and the types of filters. You're going to learn how to alter those filters automatically. And you're going to learn to control the amplitude of a note using the envelope generator. Um, that may seem a little simple to you experts. It may seem a little complicated to you novices. I think it must be just right. These are some what you call waveforms. If you imagine time going this way, and let's say voltage going this way, then a higher voltage, lower voltage, higher voltage, lower voltage, altering smoothly like that, is sort of what you might call a sine wave. It's often approximated by a triangle wave. This is called a sawtooth wave. The voltage increases slowly and then drops down to nothing, increases slowly and drops down to nothing. Here's a square wave. Doot, 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 doot. It's on, it's off, it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off. Now, here is the super cool thing about analog synthesis. You can use these voltages, these fluctuations, either for signal, in which this has a different tone when you hear it. Each one of these is a beep, and you hear a different kind of timbre or sound when you hear it. Or you can use it for control, which means that you can use a fluctuating voltage to automatically turn a knob on your synthesizer. That's what voltage-controlled or analog synthesis is all about, is cute ways to route these wiggling voltages to turn interesting knobs to make an awesome sound that will make people think you're from outer space. The first thing I'd like you to do for me when you bring up the IMS-20 is bring up the init patch. Bring up, go to your sound preset, select init, and OK. That brings up a really basic beepy sound. What you're hearing is one oscillator and it's set to a sawtooth sound. I'm changing it to a triangle sound. Sawtooth, square, and noise. Now it's a little hard to deal with those little tiny knobs, so let's zoom in. Here's my favorite way to zoom in. Double click on this weird drawing. And you're in. Oh, where's my keyboard now? Well, you just click on keyboard right here under controllers. Different waveforms make different tones. What you're hearing is the speaker wiggling back and forth in different patterns. Same frequency, it does the same number of wiggles per second, which is determined by where on the keyboard you hit. different tones. Now, this is where you generate which octave you're playing in. It's called scale, and it's, that is based on an old thing from the days of pipe organs. This is 32 feet, which means that you're playing a set of organ pipes that would be 32 feet long in order to make this pitch. And here, you've got a mere four foot. This is your first oscillator. By default, it goes through this filter. This is a high pass filter, so anything above the frequency you set it to passes. But anything below it gets cut off. So if you turn it all the way up, there's nothing below it and everything is cut off. Same thing with this low pass filter. It starts all the way open, and as you bring the frequency down, it cuts off the frequencies that are below it. Now, here's where you get into the money. You crank up the peak a little bit on both of these. 
and that's where you get your character for your filters. What it does is, at that cutoff frequency, it gives a little boost or resonance to the tone. And that's where you get your aggressive, they're called aggressive filters. If you turn it up a lot for peak or resonance, you get some really nice, nasty stuff. Now, we can make really nice noises if we sit here and wiggle this all day. But we're going to wear out our finger if we do that. Fortunately, we're from a an age in which that's not necessary. We can turn up frequency modulation right here. And something is doing that for us. It's wiggling that thing for us. We're listening to it now, I can see, and paying attention. That's controlling the pitch. That's controlling the pitch that's being played, not the frequency of the, the filter. This first one, it's wiggling that thing for us. What is doing it? This modulation generator or LFO, it's usually called a low frequency oscillator or LFO. But in this case, they call it a modulation generator. And all it does is generate this back and forth pulse of electricity that we've been talking about at a slow speed, which you can see in the flashing light. If I turn the speed down, it flashes more slowly. And our sound changes more slowly. That's controlling the pitch. That's controlling the pitch that's being played, not the frequency of the, the filter. This first one, frequency modulation. How, how much is the, M, is the modulation generator affecting the pitch of the note being played? Now, we can also affect how much the, envelope, the uh, modulation generator is affecting the frequency cutoff. No, we can't. Not that one. Oh, I remember. So you crank these up a little bit, but remember, it's not going to do anything unless you've got these things engaged a little. So let's bring, bring those in a little. And now, we're cool, going to huh? something. So what you're doing there is you're using the modulation generator to automatically wiggle your frequency of your oscillator, and this is just oscillator one, and your cutoff frequency for this filter or this filter. Uh, there's another thing going on with voltage control that isn't maybe obvious to all modern people, and that is that this keyboard sends a pulse to a thing called a, an envelope generator, which is happening over here. It's this envelope generator two on the far right is the one I want you to pay attention to. What it does is it re receives a trigger signal. Usually, in this case, the trigger signal comes at the time that the, the key is depressed. You have a certain ramp up time, which is called the attack time. Here's hold time, let's ignore that. Here's attack time. When it's set to a low thing, it attacks fast. We can attack slowly. Then, as long as the key is still depressed, it'll reach its maximum value and then start dropping down. That's called the decay time. Now, I, the decay won't do anything unless sustain is turned down a little bit. Now, sustain, that is not a time, that's a level. This is your sustain level. If sustain is all the way up, the decay doesn't matter because it takes no time to, to decay down to the sustain level. So I'm going to take the sustain level down a little bit, and then we'll hear the decay. There's your sustain level. That was a fast decay. Right, here's the release. Pretty cool. What did we learn? We learned 
that an oscillator can either be listened to or it can be used to control to, to its voltage output can be used to control a voltage controlled amplifier a voltage controlled filter a voltage controlled oscillator um, an LFO can be used to control any of those things as well and if you turn it up high enough by the way you can hear the LFO too so it can be used for signal as well and then um, we learned the different filter types uh, low pass and high pass and we learned how to control those uh, using the LFO low frequency oscillator or the modulation generator as we call it here at Korg and uh, we learned how the envelope generator works to create a voltage that is attached to a voltage controlled amplifier making the sort of volume envelope of the sound that you hear when you press a key next time as promised we'll get into those drum channels a little bit and then uh, later on down the road we'll get into that other half we'll get into more detail of synthesizers and i do want to get into that other half of the synthesizer the patch panel don't ever play any wrong notes or you're in big trouble, kid. Oh, ProAudioCoalition.com. Shortcuts and big pictures.